Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, more strikes back. Also, the V team takes a look at selling a crisis. And Governor Robert Bentley has declared war on Spencer Collier. And now it's springtime for Hitler and Germany. The Fuhrer? All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. The Voice of Alabama Politics with your host, Bill Brett. Now, the number one political show in Alabama, The V. Welcome to The Voice of Alabama Politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by The V Team. Welcome all. Welcome, and our newest member of the V team. Yes, yeah. thank you. Glad well, to be welcome. here. Uh, I'm uh, glad uh, to see all this orange and blue, and I guess you wore a little <laughs> orange and blue yeah. because Chip's a good old well, you know, good as well. War Eagle. War yeah. Eagle. <laughs> good Eagle. Uh, I guess we have to get Jack back on to balance out yeah, the Crimson yeah. Tide the next week. Yes. I think I'm good enough. I think I'm good okay. enough right here. <laughs> all right. Well, Jack's out this week, and Beth's out this week. They're running the streets, doing whatever they do. Beth did have a big win down she in did. Selma with. Yeah. Uh, Dario Melton being the mayor. That's I, exciting. That was a very, very good campaign. Uh, Jonathan did the ad for it. It was gorgeous. Uh, and I think he's going to be a great mayor. It's a great change for the city. It is. He is a fine man, and I think he'll do a great job for, for Selma. And that needs a lot of help. It really does. Uh, I mean, Chip, we'll, we'll jump right in here with you. Uh, this curious document came out this week from Governor Bentley's office accusing Spencer Collier of all types of wrongdoing, including buying clothes, buying weapons, uh, using prescription pain medication. And, and, and we're still trying to figure out what's the motivation here. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you just have to completely go back to Spencer Collier's allegations against the governor. I think it just has to be revenge for that of some sort. But you have to also look at the news agencies that reported this leaked document. They didn't um, confirm its accuracy. They didn't do their due, due diligence in confirming that document. So, yeah, and I thought that was an interesting point. And we, yeah, you, we were mean, talking about that earlier. That Right, some uh, yeah. was fair and balanced, but then one I understand from my, my intel is that somebody that was accused of something, they found out it was different information and they didn't try to change the story. That's mm -hmm. just poor journalism. Yeah, I and mean, there are is. conflicts even within the story itself. For instance, take the gun purchases. Uh, they say that guns for Aaliyah can only be purchased with a purchase order. But Spencer put them on an existing account at Gulf State. Now, if they're only purchased with a purchase order, then why does the state of Alabama have an open credit account with Gulf State? Why well, would that exist? I mean, it's just so, that's a conflict. In yeah, it's exactly. so odd though because all right, we've heard these allegations before. Okay, as, let's put the hay down where the viewers can see okay. it. Okay, don't you think it's probably because the governor's mistress, Rebecca Mason, has an axe to grind, possibly with Spencer Collier? Well, we're told that. I mean, I I was told by somebody in the governor's office that that Rebecca Mason picked out the quotes to make sure that this was the ones that the news agencies looked at. Well, that's very that, believable. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, but it's just, why do it now? It doesn't make any sense. I think, I think it might stem from the fact that there's nobody in the governor's office, you know, being an adult there anymore. You don't have Joe Espy there that's true. as the governor's attorney. That's true. And this Outside does, legal yeah, And this Out. does turn everything, every, all eyes away from the impeachment committee. Yeah. Well, I know it's not an impeachment committee. It's a judiciary committee, but everybody knows. But the, the timing of this is also really interesting, too, because that impeachment committee hearing was Tuesday. That morning, um, the governor's office turned over 1,600 pages of documents to that subpoena committee just to try to get out of having to turn over more, to try to give a re them a reason to not have subpoena power. And then the next day, rumors start circulating, and then confirmation comes that Joe Espy's gone. Right, and he stepped down. Well, and it is, it, it, there's a lot of coincidence here, Claire, and you and I know in politics there are no coincidences. It, usually right everything is simply by design and it's methodically thought out. Well, but as we know, Rebecca is supposedly a PR 
spend mice or whatever. So yeah. she's in charge of the governor's office. Well, we know she's but not she's a stir to the state, honey. We know she's not a spin stir. <laughs> uh, what are y'all talking about? She's not there anymore. No, right. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't and I believe she got caught in the Wallace elevator maybe yeah, three, heard, four months ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it, you know, look, I have a lot of respect for Brian Lyman, Mary Sells, but I mean, when you get a person who is mentioned right. in the document, calls you and said, look, what they said I said or what Spencer did Accused. is not true. I mean, that's the rest of it is tainted then in my mind. Yeah, I mean, I, that's to me it's egregious. That's one of my favorite mm -hmm. words, Chip. You'll, you'll figure that out. But, <laughs> I mean, that's just over the top that the, someone that's accused or part of this and that a press person does not go and say, hey, let me come they sit down. They should have validated think, more of the information. I think that Brian did a good, draw, yeah, good job was of fair. trying to balance he the did. sides he of did. this. He gave equal ink on that but, one. But, you know, they first gave it to Kim Chandler, and Kim had the wisdom to leave it alone once she heard that that one part was bogus. I mean, it's just scary to me, and it's scary the way they're acting. They th it's, law it's almost lawless how they're acting. They don't think that there's any consequences to their action. Don't forget, the grand jury is still impaneled in Montgomery. When you think you're the supreme potentate, law doesn't touch you. Yeah. Well, wait, Public opinion me. doesn't touch you. We, we did live through this scenario before with the speaker. And yes, we did. It was exactly did. like that, and I'm really a bit dumbfounded that the... Governor, because I really think a lot of Robert Bentley, I always have. I'm surprised at a lot of this stuff that's going on, but I think it's somebody else driving this instead of him. Yeah, it, it is. And it, this it's is not the so I do Robert want to hit, we had eight, uh, right, six I think we've got a couple minutes left. I do want to go to this Joe Espy thing. I, I, we've been hearing a lot of pretty interesting stuff about how that happened. And what happened was uh, Luther Strange and Alice Martin got the governor to sign a document saying, the folks in Greene or the folks in Lowndes County, the folks in Macon County were breaking the law and they needed to enforce the law, blah, blah, blah. And so then it turns out that Joe Espy has a conflict of interest and now he's gone. That just sounds fishy, doesn't you know, it? He, we, we, you know, he's represented Milton McGregor for his, at least probably 25 to 30 years. So they're really, when you come to the gaming issue and that, I think there's probably a true conflict of interest. But... There could be a little fox in the hole somewhere. <laughs> there definitely could. I mean, what, think about the fact that, all right, Bentley is facing what we believe is a firestorm uh, yeah. of, uh, of indictments. And who do you want by your side, Joe Espy or the other guy? Yeah, I think everybody in the state knows Joe Espy is one of the best attorneys yeah. out there. Yeah. So. That's because he is. I mean, he'll put you under the ether in a few minutes, and you're just going, yes, Joe. Yeah, you're right. I, you're right. It's happened to me. Well, uh, we're doing free advertisements for him this morning. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, he's one, of the, to, uh, anyway. he's one of the ones that during the Hubbard trial, I sent him a thing. I said, do I need to send you an invoice? Because I want my cut. <laughs> <laughs> but we never got a cut. Hey, you know, Joe's a great guy. And, and, and this thing on Espy, though, it, it looks kind of weird. Uh, that all of a sudden he has a conflict. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Alice Martin and Luther and Matt uh, Hart are a lot more, a lot smarter than we think they are. I would never underestimate the three of them, and no. particularly not a strong woman like Alice Martin. Absolutely. Well, yeah, they they say she she does a great job over there, and, and you don't want to get on her bad side. <laughs> no, I've met her. Claire knows her. No. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Well, anyway, whatever the governor is trying to do through, or Ms. Mason is trying to do, I don't think it's working. We're going to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. I'm Deontay Wilder. As the heavyweight champion of the world, it is very important to make sure that every punch I throw is thrown with purpose in order to make a difference in my fight. I feel the same way about decisions made in my home state of Alabama and our nation. That is why I'm registered to vote. I encourage you to register to vote and remember on election day to bring a valid photo ID to the polls. Let's make a difference.
Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, uh, I think that the Southern Poverty Law Center is determined to make uh, Chief Justice Roy Moore governor. I think it'd be good for both of them. Uh, but Chief Justice Moore has appealed the decision handed down by the Court of the Judiciary. Uh, he's got one shot left, it looks like. He does. Um, and uh, Chip and I were talking about this yesterday. He, he, the Supreme Court, he's appealed this week, and as we all knew he would. Um, but the question is going to be, what is what's the Supreme Court going to do with it? Now, there's there's a theory out there also that because of their involvement with all of this, these justices may also have to recuse altogether. So we may end up with no justices to hear the case. Right. Well, then, if they don't, yeah, okay. And I, let me just say, I think he should appeal it. Okay, that's oh, just yeah, my personal of opinion. Course. And I think you're right. For all these justices on the Alabama Supreme Court that are under him, are they going to have the guts? to really take this on? Well, Are they going to recuse themselves? Matt Staver's Liberty Council has asked that they all have recused themselves, have they not? Yeah, they have, but who, who then hears it that we get a right. point? That's the question. They, you know, uh, so, it, so then, if they were to really do that, then would it go to the 11th Circuit, or would it go to the Supreme Court, even though what has happened doesn't go outside of state boundaries, but the issue itself of marrying individuals was a federal law? Yeah. I mean, that gets into the whole concept of what's the U.S. Supreme Court's jurisdiction here. Yeah. Right. Because, like you said, Moore is accused of issuing an administrative order right. that effectively told the state's probate judges to ignore the U.S. Supreme Court. Right. But I don't know if Moore's suspension from the bench is necessarily falls under federal jurisdiction okay. because that's state law just because the subject matter that he was removed for of course, this may play right into Moore's argument that state law trumps. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, that was an interesting argument. If uh, anybody knows the law, it is Roy Moore. Well, you know, and there's a lot of hair splitting in this whole deal. And, that, that, and of course, that's how you get employed lawyers. You know, if you only have one lawyer in a town, there are no lawsuits. Right. <laughs> you got to have two. Well, I uh, think we should get somebody a law. We'll, we'll figure out a lawyer to come on and talk about this. Maybe we yeah. should make the bar it's, requirements it's, it's, a little bit yeah. higher so we don't have so many lawyers. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the don't even go uh, there. Let's don't even go down uh, that road. You know, I, I, I will and continue to take issue with the uh, Judiciary Inquiry Commission and appointed commission. And, yeah, we do have a lot of good appointed commissions. But I, I personally take issue with an un Appointed, uh, with an appointed, politically appointed court, I mean, right. basically trying or finding probable cause and removing Roy Moore. Now, an elected uh, official. Yeah, who was elected by the people of the state of Alabama, and this is a select hand group of appointed people at JIC. And, and if uh, you think it's not decision. political. You, you have a different take on that. Yeah, I do have a different take on this because I don't look at JIC as the court that tried this case. The court of the judiciary tried it. Right. Jick served as a prosecutor. And any prosecutor that you're going to have, it's their job to be biased. So I think calling Jick politically motivated is a criticism in, in a certain light. But also, it's their job to be biased. If they think that Roy Moore did something wrong, it's their job to go after him. But the court of the judiciary, if you, if you think it's not political, look at the way they rule. The, the Jick asked them to remove him from office. So to be politically safe, what they did instead was mm -hmm. to suspend him without pay move. for the remainder of his term, which effectively did the same uh, thing, but right. in a much softer yeah. manner. After eight years, yeah. not as the chief justice, but I mean, just with the title. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I've kind of been a no victim pay. of something like that. And no so, pay. Yeah. so, I mean, that, that's just yeah. what you've done. When, you, when, when you've been around this thing long enough, though, you know that these players who have been embedded in these things for so long that the chick has always been political. Yeah, I was going to say, and that, and I'm just saying, unfortunately for some of us that have a little more gray hair, that have known these individuals. <laughs> you don't have any gray hair, neither does Susan. <laughs> well, I, I, thank, I thank my father for that every day, yeah. that, that I may not ever have gray hair. But I'm just saying we need to look at the individuals that sit on that committee and people they've represented in the past and kind of where they lean. I just think this is, I think it's just very dangerous is what I think. That's right. And, and, and my suggestion is simply this. You know, we need better guidelines for how they operate, uh, stick with traditional, uh, uh, you know, canons as, as far as... Judicial canons. You know, right. and, mm -hmm. and just, just handle the traditional stuff. And this is far outside the traditional. We have judges every day that rule, 
uh, get overruled by the s state Supreme Court and nobody goes after them. Well, I mean, I guess the biggest thing for the viewers, I mean, this is monumental that this committee would unseat, suspend the Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court. This has never happened. This is a monumental event in Alabama's history. Is what I'm well, saying. I mean, I don't think it's that monumental that happened in 2003 for basically the same well, thing. Well, it, it was different. It, that, that, it, you know, just, different. He disobeyed direct order. I mean, that, so, but, I mean this, that was essentially, I, in my view, I think that's what happened here. I mean, the U.S. Supreme Court came down with Obergefell v. Hodges, and Roy Moore just ignored it. But think about it. I mean, let's not get off on this tangent, but when you go to the United States Supreme Court, you look up there and, and inscribe through all the uh, marble is the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I don't even want so to go down, down the go Ten there, Commandment but, uh, you know. road. Because, but, you know, this is why we have opinions, because everybody right. has a different one, and they're all welcome here. Right. Uh, I do want to get to this last thing. I want to compliment uh, the governor for appointing a commission to look at gaming, maybe finally this will will get some sanity out of the craziness because it's what we're seeing now is, you know, the threats and who's paying whom and all that. Susan, this makes some sense. Yeah, and, it? and the play on words and all of this. You know, one side plays the word this way, one side plays the word. Let's get some clear definitions of what gaming is, what is allowed under the constitutional amendments in those counties, what they can and cannot do. Let's get this. And, and get clear with it. Well, I think one of the, the thing, thing is to look at everything and make recommendations as to what type of gaming we will allow, what we won't allow. And, and I think, this is supposedly, oh, I'm sorry, this is supposedly done by mid to mid March, mm -hmm. right, of 2017, <laughs> and um, which, you know, a few days down the road, we've been struggling with this issue, what, 15 or 20 years? 25 Good. years ago, the first one was filed. <laughs> yeah, tw okay, 25 years. Yeah, yeah, they they clearly clearly no this but, advisory yeah, right. council is also, I think, they're tasked with looking at other states and how other states handle they are. gambling. It'll there. be really interesting if they really do their job and it, 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 the selection of exactly who is I, on I, there. Now, I don't know who's on. I've heard that, uh, I've heard that uh, Clinton Carter's on it. I've heard mm -hmm. that Paul Sanford may be on it. Uh, I, I don't Are they planning on putting someone from the Attorney General's office on it? Supposedly. Yeah. I think they have, they have one representative from the District Attorney's Association, one from the Sheriff's Association, and then Speaker McCutcheon gets to appoint to one Democrat, one Republican, and then the President Pro, pro Tem, Tem yep. Bill mm -hmm. Marsh, gets to appoint one Democrat and one and Republican. And the Governor gets how many appointments on five, him? Five. Five, five total. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'll just say this, I mean, and I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight, but it'll be interesting to see how many people from PCI are appointed to this. Mission. Yeah, or that are friendlies. Yeah, Listen, I've got nothing against PCI. Oh, I don't either. Let's just get it settled. With 11 people appointed to this commission, I think it's egregious that the Office of the Attorney General, the top law enforcement cop, oversees this, does not have an appointment on this commission. I agree. We're going to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. I'm John Merrill. As your Secretary of State, I want to ensure that every eligible U.S. citizen that's a resident of Alabama is registered to vote and has a qualified government-issued photo ID. You can register to vote by downloading our app for your iPhone or your Android, or you can visit alabamavotes.gov. We want you to be registered to vote and have a photo ID. You can make a difference. We'll see you at the polls. I'm Charles Barkley. As an impact player on the court in college and the NBA, it was very important for me to make a difference in the game. I feel the same way about decisions made in my home state of Alabama and our nation. That's why I'm registered to vote. I want to encourage you to be registered to vote and make sure you bring your voter ID to the polls. Let's make a difference. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, 
they're selling another crisis. You know, we got, they're using these bad things that are happening at our prison to gin up support for this $800 million no bid or design build bond issue to build new prisons. And, and, and they're also going around and saying that, 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 that the federal court is going to close the prisons or take over our prisons if we don't do something immediately. Yes, there is, and, and, and some people are calling a misunderstanding, but there is word out there that there is a, a writ on Judge Thomas's desk saying that they're going to come in and, and take over the Alabama prisons. That's not the case. There are three cases pending. One has already been settled. There are two more cases pending having to do with health, mental health, and Americans with Disability Acts. Now, according to, we spoke with Cam Ward this week. We also spoke with the ACLU. Um, Southern Poverty Law Southern Poverty Law Center. I'm sorry. Uh, that explained that, that how this is going to happen is that, yes, Judge Thompson is going to rule that the, the prisons are not in perfect shape when it comes to well, they're mental not health. Unconstitutional. They're, it's unconstitutional right. the way they are. But that doesn't mean he's going to come immediately and close down the prisons. The right. process goes that he will allow it to go to the legislature for this uh, session, this regular session. Now, if they come out of this regular session without a fix, fl fix then he's going to swat us with a big flash. Well, I mean, it's, you know, look, to build prisons, it's going to take five, six, seven years just to get them But out. also, Senator Ward said that they are not going at it and in this big uh, deal. They're going to take it a phase at a time. They're going to take one phase, get that completed. The legislature's going well, to look what, at it, see if it got done. That's what we're hearing they want to do. Okay, right? well, where is all this money coming from? I think it's crazy that question. we like get an $800 million bond. We're going to dig ourselves another hole, get a little mm, more debt. I would agree and, with and you. And I think a lot of this is a scare tactic. That's what they do. Sure. I and mean, that's what they used to say at ADM. If you don't do, raise these fees and do this, EPA is going to come in and take over. So they're saying, uh, it might not be too bad if the federal prisons came in and took over well, our state prisons. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing My couple might like a federal prison better yeah. than a state prison. <laughs> he would definitely like it better. But that's it, Chip. We're, you know, we're spend, we have borrow and spend Republicans right. in charge, mm -hmm. you know? I mean. I think, I think that's definitely, that's my question. This is nearly a billion dollars to pay for prisons. And, and, there's and no it will be in on, the end. There's no return on investment there. It would be different if you were spending $800 million on new highways and interchanges, but right. it's on prisons. And that's not to say that our prisons don't need an update. They oh, do. they do. They're There's horrid. no question. But this all comes back to the question of what is our revenue problem in Alabama and what is our spending problem in Alabama and how are we going to fix that? That's right. And that goes right. to the much deeper issue why we have so many people in prison. That goes to that issue. And as you don't know, and I say it all the time for the viewers, for over 25 years in the general fund budget, our two boiling parts and problems have been corrections and Medicaid. Yep. And when I move back to work, in finance, and here I sit, and it's 20, almost to be 17, and there's still the boiling pots because everybody's just patched and patched and well, patched. Uh, well, yeah. nobody's and, tried to I mean, this. Joey Kennedy won a Pulitzer surprise almost 20 years ago, or, or 30 years ago, writing about the same issue. Right. And, and they're, they're basing this uh, $800 million of overcrowding, overcrowding, overcrowding. No, stop, stop right there. While you're addressing mental, you know, getting these facilities up to, to snuff, we're talking about increasing beds by only 3,000. Right. So stop yelling and, and, that this is about overcrowding because it's not. We need to talk about not. criminal justice reform. Right. You're right about that. Because right. we have elected judges that in some in some circuits get you get five years for having yeah, marijuana, right, and in some right, circuits you get right. six months. So and, and, because well, that's that's the whole uh, sentencing structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that and, and we tried to do that with sentencing when I was there with Sessions and Pryor, and we looked at North Carolina. It's Shockingly enough, Chip, it's better than it was yeah, it and, and the 20 years ago. I'm sorry bill to say. That we got and, and you know who got was really behind really, that really sentencing good. reform here? Roy Moore. He wanted fair sentencing. He didn't want well, this Well, I can stuff. assure you that Jeff Sessions and Bill Pryor was big time on this. Yeah, right. Well, Pryor has written, Justice Pryor has written volumes on and, that And Alabama's got to stop talking out of both sides of its mouth, okay? Let's address prison reform as prison reform. Let's address gaming and define that. You know, let's stop talking out of both sides of our mouth here. Well, you know, we wrote back in 2012, we need to learn, uh, we, we know how to be tough on crime, we need to learn how to be smart on it. I think Richard Cohen with the Southern Poverty Law Center, when we talked to him, he said, look, we're just, basically said, we're just doing what the state was unwilling to do mm -hmm. on its own, so we're going to sue them. So if this, if, if, if the Southern Poverty Law Center and Judge uh, Myron Thompson come in here and say, you got to do it, that's better than that our politicians saying, oh, yeah, we're going to do it, and never doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, unfortunately, they're having to 
they're instead of legislating, they're doing this through the legal process, and then the legal process is going to mandate them to do it and make them do their job. That's the bottom line. You know, that's why we called the make me state, because we have to be made <laughs> to do anything right. Absolutely. <laughs> when, when it used to come to redistrict, and it was always that way. It yeah. would be a legal battle, but I will say they've gotten better about that. But for yeah. years, that's the way it was in Alabama. Well, I'm still not convinced that, that our, our boundaries are going to hold up, uh, but I, so far, so I good. I wonder if somebody's going to come in here and make us get our checkbook in order. Well, I think law enforcement is probably going to be it, in it's on that, too. It's everywhere. <laughs> well, speaking of checkbook, I think that there's been a great new addition that the governor had Absolutely. bought on someone, uh, Clinton, terrific young man. Yeah, to, Clinton Carter. I, I, I call it Carter to the rescue. Yeah, Carter to the you rescue. Know, uh, Bless uh, his heart. Clinton's bright, got a tremendous fu uh, future ahead of him. And why he walked onto the Titanic, he tells me, is because he believes in public service. Right. That's I the people that's we need in those positions, is the ones that are committed to public service and not their private pocketbook. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very true. And, and I think he will do a great job. This is all in the midst of that. FBI investigation. Right. Supposedly, Aaliyah has that report. It's supposed to be back in the hands of the FBI this month and then should be made public so we'll know what their audit of the finance department shows. Well, and I think that, you know, the, that data breach, that, that data breach we now have learned was over a year ago. Right. It wasn't something recent. Mm -hmm. Right. So this may lead right down the road to all the things that Spencer Collier has exactly. said about them looking at his medical records, about looking, trying to go after enemies. This, this right. is right enemies about the list. right time for all of that to have happened. I, I tell mm -hmm. you, what, what concerns me is that uh, Clinton Carter has got, he is surrounded by people who do not have his best interests. He's going to have to clean house over there, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well. I think he's got the leadership ability to do that. But, I mean, this, this, all of this is dangerous. I mean, it really is. It is, because, I mean, uh, whether you like it or not, they're being looked at deeply yeah. uh, over all these and contracts and other stuff. And a new sweeps cleanest, Claire, to steal one of yours. Well, we got about 30 seconds, and back to Chip's point. The Cato Institute, a libertarian, right-leaning group, smart bunch of folks, gave Bentley an F a this past week. You, you wrote about that. Yes, Big I did. Uh, the Cato Institute is a, is a far-right libertarian, fiscally conservative group, right. so they gave Bentley an F on his fiscal conservative report card, basically because in 2015 he suggested the state raise taxes to try to balance the general fund. So they didn't give him any credit. I mean, I don't think that the Cato Institute gave him any credit for trying to solve an issue in Alabama, which is the recurring you know, shortfalls yep. in our general fund. We're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.